This is Twit. Brian, uh, is that right? Yeah, Brian in Merrimack, New Hampshire. Hey, Brian, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hey, Leo. By the way, uh, I called in a couple of Sundays ago, and you bumped me for Steve Martin. I, I've never been so into <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear what Steve said? He said, oh, no, 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 take Brian. I, I, I can't believe you would bounce Brian Hesche. Anyway. <laughs> I am so sorry. Stuff. And, in fact, I wasn't. I, I accidentally hung up on you. Because I, I was I so flustered that Steve Martin called. I went, eh, and I pushed the buttons wrong because I wanted to put you on hold as I did the following caller and take you after Steve. And you heard, did you hear what Steve said? He said, oh, no, no, take Brian. I know. What, what a great guy. Isn't that amazing? I, I, I hope he's listening to this call right now or on the podcast and, and realizes there is a comic in Merrimack, New Hampshire, who absolutely adores him. And thinks that he is the, the cat's meow. Uh, he is just incredible. I can't believe I just said cat's meow. Um, Brian, are you a comic? Yeah, yeah, sometimes. That's amazing. What are the chances of that? Wouldn't be the first time that a comic's been bumped by Steve Martin, I would imagine. Well, now it should be like all my wounds for him. I, I hope. If he calls, so, I am not talking to him. I am talking to Brian from Merrimack, New Hampshire. God, I hope so. <laughs> what can I do for you, Brian? Sure. So, um, so I have an iPad. I have a, a Samsung um, Galaxy S4. I think they're both fantastic. But um, on the Apple side, I kind of, um, I kind of don't like it how they don't talk. Uh, it, it doesn't have any permissions like on Android. And I feel that the uh, permissions for Android, so many of the apps have just increasingly more and more yeah. over time, kind of like taxes. Yeah. Uh, kind of like how taxes only started with the rich and now, like, lots of tax, you know, it's moved down to the middle class and whatever. It, it's just over time spread and spread and spread. Yeah. Permissions are like uh, ladies' purses. Once you, you know, get bigger, you can't stop. You have to go bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, then it's like a hockey goalie's bag. <laughs> I mean, it's... It, it is, uh, I, I think the permissions now are so, so ridiculously intrusive. And a quick quick example is my favorite app is TuneIn. I'm a radio Love guy. Love it. Me too. Well. Love it. What's that? TuneIn Radio Pro. Awesome. Yeah. And you can listen I, to this show on it. Absolutely. You'll love it. And uh, But the thing is, even now, it wants access to all of my contacts. And it, because it wants to be social, right? And I think that's a, a weird problem. So let me talk a little bit about this because it's a that's a very it's an interesting it's an astute observation. And it's very interesting. Apple does the same thing, but they have a different philosophy about it. So uh, I think all mobile platforms now, as, for security reasons, and because we are as consumers more uh, aware of privacy issues, uh, all mobile platforms essentially work the same. An and, and now, by the way, the Macintosh is doing this too. An application to do certain things has to explicitly announce that it's, it, it's going to do those things. And uh, then the operating system will say, okay, but if you want to do those things, you're going to need the user's permission. The difference between Android and Apple, Android is, and this is kind of in a nutshell, the difference between the two operating systems, really. Android says, we're going to dump it all on you. You get to choose. Android is all about choice. Uh, we will show you everything that the app wants to do, and it's up to you. Now, it would be kind of nice if you could selectively approve these and say, well, I'm going to give it this and this, but not the contact list. But, and why don't they allow you to do that? Well, because I want. it might break the app. It certainly would make the app more complicated to write because the app would have to respond appropriately when it's denied permission to do something it wants to do. Right. So that I, you know, I agree, and I think we're go, we're going to get there. Now, the way Apple does it is the same. The developer will in explicitly in uh, in Xcode say, "I need to do this, this, and this." Some of that stuff is just approved. Apple does it for you, and then that is kind of the way it is, isn't it? You trust the Apple Store; they're going to do that for you, and then the rest of it isn't done all at once, but is done on ad hoc as needed. And in Apple's case, at least, you can sometimes say no. So if an application needs to know your exact location, the first time the app runs and asks for it, you get to say whether it's going to get it or not. Not on install, as in Android, but the first time it wants that. And then Apple, in the new iOS 8, has gone one step further. Sometime later, a few days later or a week later, it will say, 
it will pop up. Hey, do you know it's still it's still getting the location? Is that still okay with you? So it gives you another chance to say no. Same thing with contacts. If the application wants your contacts, it won't say anything until it actually asks iOS for contacts. And then iOS says, hey, you know, this app wants your contacts. Yes or no. Hmm. And it, what's nice is on iOS, you can often say, no, don't give it location and the app will still work. Or no, don't give it contacts and the app will still work. And Android, you're, the burden is on you. It gives you a long list most people don't read. I'm including myself. And you just go, yeah, yeah, whatever. You're, you, now, I will say one thing. The way these permissions are, are written and structured, they're pretty broad. So, for instance, uh, an application, and there are many of them, WhatsApp is a good example, that verifies your phone number as part of the install by sending itself a text. You've seen it do this, probably. When you sign up for WhatsApp, it says, is this your phone number? You say yes. It says, all right, we're going to send a text message. And you don't have to do anything. You, the text message comes in, WhatsApp sees it and says, okay. In order to do that, it has to ask for permission to read and write text messages. Mm -hmm. And you may look at that and go, why would WhatsApp want to send text messages and, and receive them and read them without my permission? That's scary. But in fact, it's just that mechanism. And, and the only way WhatsApp could do it is by asking you for full permission. Same thing with your camera. And you'll see this with Facebook. WhatsApp wants to write posts on your Facebook timeline. And you, wait a minute, I don't want it writing posts. But in fact, it's it has to ask that permission because it can't do some of the functionality. So I think really what it comes down to is not the granular permissions, but do I trust that company? Do I trust WhatsApp? Do I trust the company that's writing the application? Do I trust Microsoft? Do I trust Apple? If it's a company that you've never heard of, you might think twice about giving it a lot of permissions on your system.